this official Newcastle United video is brought to you in association with Newcastle Breweries. Proud to be the club's major sponsor. Welcome to the first black and white video. All the action from Newcastle's brilliant start to the season coming right up, and there's much more. How Peter Beardsley faced an agonising decision, just what the doctor didn't order. United's new prince, why Philippe Albert came from Belgium to Newcastle via Gateshead. My dad plays for England. Meet the venisons in the shirt they all want to wear. We'll be looking back on the marvellous night in Antwerp when Newcastle took Europe by storm and win the shirt off Andy Cole's back, our competition to find the best of 41 goals. But first, think back to May and those great scenes as the Newcastle fans paid tribute to the team's fantastic first season back in the top flight. Third in the Premiership was a tremendous achievement, but it was never going to satisfy a man with Kevin Keegan's ambitions. I know we had a great season and the lads deserved all the credit they got, but we didn't have a trophy to go around with. And I tell you, that's strange, doing a lap of honour. Then you think, well, what have we won? And we hadn't really won anything. We'd won a lot of respect. Uh, we'd won a lot of fans over, especially from out the district. I mean, it's easy to understand why people in Newcastle want the club to do well. But we've actually now got a, a support countrywide and possibly even a little bit worldwide because of television. But I just felt that... I said afterwards, it, it, it's not my idea of a lap of honour. You've got to win something. The Newcastle boss set about the task of climbing the final two rungs of the football ladder. First, he added extra cover at fullback by signing Jason Drysdale, Watford's 23-year-old former England youth international. And he gave a chance of the big time to Steve Guppy, a left-sided midfield player who'd emerged in Wickham Wanderers' impressive first season in the Football League. Switzerland's classy fullback Mark Hottiger had caught Keegan's eye during the World Cup. Proven international experience had been welded onto United's defence for around a modest half a million pounds. Hottiger arrived from Swiss club Sion just in time for Newcastle's big pre-season challenge. United's crowd-pulling appeal had earned them a speedy invitation to the prestigious Ibrox tournament with Premier League champions Manchester United providing the semi-final opposition in the four-team contest. It was always going to be an anxious night for a hefty contingent of Newcastle fans who'd crossed the border to Scotland. And this is Bass, this is Watson, supported by Fox. So we're trying to make an angle. This up there, takes it on. There's only one thing on his mind now, that's to have a shot. We've seen some quality goals this evening. I think that was probably one of the best that we'll ever see. Here's Gillespie. Hughes with a turn pass, but Steve Guppy back helping his defence. Very important intervention there by Guppy to help out at the back. That's me. Sernice got a reach, it's Cantona with a header, and United have equalised. I thought David May just slightly overhit this cross. Sernice will come out with such authority and just doesn't make it, and then Cantona just concentrates on heading the ball, and it drops into the goal. And so it went to penalties. Three successes each, plus a Cantona miss, led to sudden death. And Newcastle's new World Cup star was about to announce he'd really arrived. A chance to win the match. The final brought Newcastle face to face with Italian guest Sampdoria, who'd already upset their host Glasgow Rangers by winning 4-2. Keegan's team were about to find out how tough life can be in Europe, despite taking this lead. Here's Fox. Support from Hottiger. Oh, Cole! It's a definitive. 
magnificent finish. Melly actually got the run right that time. Beresford had to play the ball. It bounces off Lombardo. Who gets it back from Melly. Lombardo. 1-1. One, one. Petrelli, Lombardo onside. Is it a second for him? It's round Cernicek. It is a second. And Sampdoria in front. And Attilio Lombardo is leading Newcastle. A merry dance at times. Here's uh, Melly. A oh, penalty. Beresford says he was having his shirt tugged. Bertorelli scored a penalty yesterday, and he scores to the same side here, although Cernicek went the right way, and it's 3-1 Sampdoria. So the cup went to the Italians, not a serious disaster, but a reminder of just how high United had to set their sights. Enter Philippe Albert from Anderlecht, who decided Tyneside was the perfect place to celebrate his 27th birthday. Albert had established a formidable reputation as a central defender with Belgium in the World Cup. And even at £2.65 million, Keegan knew common market prices represented better value than domestic transfer fees. It's half past six in the morning and Newcastle are on the move again. Albert had no sooner touched down from Belgium than he was off on a short hop across the Irish Sea. Defence was the key word. Under the watchful eye of the RUC, Albert joined in his first training session. Newcastle were preparing for a testimonial match for Northern Ireland's former manager, Billy Bingham, who'd become another Keegan fan. Well, I think they're a very interesting side, and now he's adding something extra to it. Philippe, Albert, Hotker, the, the fullback. And you can see now, it'll generate a tremendous amount of excitement on, on time side. And I'm sure this year is going to be very interesting. The Toon Army had travelled to Belfast to get a first impression of United's new look defence. They discovered there was a growing band of Irish admirers for their team and its football philosophy. Their boss, you know, plays the way it should be played. He plays with five forwards. Uh, you know, in, in the old days, you know, that's the way we played in the 60s, 70s. And that's the way they play. And uh, they're very close to being a great, great side. And uh, it's nice that he, he's brought them over for Billy. And, and I think it's just going to be a, a, a great night. And uh, you'll be dancing around a few of them. This, this new lad, Philippe Albert, who's cost 2.65 and all that. Well, yeah, he, he better not come near me because I'm going to stick a ball through his legs as soon as he does. Right, so, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean it as well. Northern Ireland saved their best until the last 20 minutes, but Newcastle were flying from the start. sort of game until the Battle of the Greats took an unexpected turn. Still, Kevin could afford to take the odd knock as his team turned on the style. Robbie Elliott completed a 5-2 win. No wonder Ulster's former Newcastle contingent were full of praise for the new look United. Well, it was always going to take off at some time, but when it was going to happen, well, we never knew. Uh, I'm just pleased the way it has happened. Fans deserve it. It's all happened within two and a half years, really, and I'm amazed. And not only have they done it the professional way, they've done it with style, and I, I like the, the way they play the game. The, the most entertaining uh, club in, in Britain at the moment, there's no doubt about that. <clears throat> and they've done it in style, and, I, and that's what I love. But before the season had even begun, a shadow was cast over the club by the sad news that Terry Hibbert had died at the age of 47. 
Terry was a real character, and when a who's who of Newcastle turned out to pay their respects, the thoughts inevitably went back to a goal that will go down in history as one of the greatest the club has ever scored. Tudor got it away to Hibbert. MacDonald is on ahead. What a ball there by Hibbert. And away goes MacDonald again. And that's a magnificent goal. That is number two. That goal was Terry to a tee. His brilliant passing ability with that famous left peg laid on so many goals for Malcolm MacDonald. Yorkshireman Terry was a real bargain buy, one of Joe Harvey's best at just 30,000 from Leeds. A frail figure but a tireless worker in midfield, he made more than 250 appearances in two spells during the 70s. Right in behind Forrest, it's a good cross ball and it's Tudor! It's 3-3! The new generation of United fans have begun chanting Terry Hibbert on the wing all over again. That's one example of why Terry is guaranteed a permanent and special place in Newcastle's Hall of Fame. The long summer wait for the new season was extended by another day as Newcastle kicked off with a Sunday game at newly promoted Leicester City. Brian Little's side had played some significant parts in United's recent history. It was Leicester who might have sent Newcastle crashing into the old third division. Then it was Leicester again who were the victims when Keegan's team celebrated. But his team must have still left the field deflated. That red card for Pavel Cernicek was bad enough, but the real sickener was the injury to Peter Beardsley. A fractured cheekbone was the return of a nightmare. Peter had missed the start of the last campaign after an infamous clash with Liverpool's Neil Ruddock. This time, he'd literally turned the other cheek. The initial prediction was six to eight weeks out of action. But as we know now, it turned into a different and far more dramatic story. It was a new-look St James's Park that awaited United for their first home match. Demolishing the old Gallagher end had begun last season. Now the complete picture of Sir John Hall's vision for the future was beginning to emerge. At nearly £5 million, the latest development would take the ground capacity to just over 34,000. Filling in the corners is the final task before the whole bowl effect is finished, and 40,000 fans will then enjoy a stadium that's second to none. But for the players, the biggest improvement would be underfoot. Earlier in the year, Kevin Keegan held an impromptu press conference out on the park just to show reporters why the playing surface had become so bad. The chairman promised a pitch worthy of the team, and in May, the hallowed turf was duly ripped up and sold off. Supporters bought the lawn of a lifetime and raised thousands of pounds for charity. The new pitch cost around another £350,000 to put down. That sort of money would be a transfer record for many clubs. No expense was spared to give Keegan's team every chance of reaching the very top. It was Steve Watson who got his chance from the loss of Peter Beardsley. Newcastle's young Mr Versatility stepped in to face Coventry and once again proved his worth. The game in four days brought Newcastle's bogey team from last season, Southampton, to the north. Matthew Letissier was the danger man who inspired the Saints to complete the only double of the last campaign against Keegan's team, but this time it was such a different story. No wonder the toughest job on Tyneside was getting a ticket for St James's Park, but with a brace of goals from Andy Cole almost a part of everyday life, then United fans must have gone home talking about boy wonder Steve Watson. Three goals in two games, not bad for a stand-in. For a young man who burst onto the Newcastle scene, Watson has still taken his time to arrive. He made his debut nearly four years ago, the youngest player ever to pull on a black and white shirt at just 16 years of age. It was in a local derby at Middlesbrough that Watson made the headlines with this audacious somersault throw-in. The fans loved it, but you need to be more than a gymnast to impress Kevin Keegan. When I first come out, I told him he was too full of tricks. Uh, I don't think really came into the training ground to do the right thing. Come in, watch Barry Venison, watch Peter Beardsley, watch Paul Bracewell, watch these type of players who are all around you, and don't just accept that what I'm saying is right. That's why they've got to the top. That's why they're consistent every week. Now, you've got to do the same things. And, he, and to be fair, that's what he's done. And he does look a tremendous player. 
The former Walls End Boys Club star missed out on Newcastle's First Division Championship season. He lined up for the opening game, but never got another league start. It's been a hard battle for Steve, who perhaps used to suffer from not having a definite position. But now, that's his trump card. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing not having a position, but um, as long as you can keep putting us in when anybody, when anybody gets injuries, you can put us in any way you want, and I'll just go in and do my job. He won't always be the one who has to step down. He won't always be the one who you look at and you think, well, I've got to leave one out, it's got to be Steve Watson. He won't always be that way, and he knows that. Everyone knows that if you want to play for England, Terry Venables is the man to impress. Robert Lee had also scored three goals in the two home games. The timing of the late fifth against Southampton couldn't have been better, with the England coach at the match. So delight when Lee got his England call-up papers to face the United States. But there was outrage among the fans on Tyneside that Andy Cole still couldn't win a place in the squad. Even his boss can't understand it. Well, you know, the Andy Cole saga is, is, is baffling for us at the club, but I suppose we're biased. The England manager, for whatever reason, thinks that either Alan Shearer is number one undisputed, or that Alan Shearer can't play with Andy Cole or can't play with certain other players. Now, that is his decision and his decision alone. I say to Andy, go on, just keep doing the same things. He can't keep ignoring you, Pat. He can't, because nobody dare. No manager anywhere in the world dare ignore him for much longer if he keeps knocking the goals in. And, you know, don't give him or anybody the chance to say, well, look, you know, temperament, suspect, or work rate's not good enough, or he can't hold the ball up. Work on those things even more. He will make his England debut this, this season, providing he keeps fit, definitely. Twenty-four hours later, the best shock of the season. Barry Venison gets an England call-up. For the Venisons, quality time together away from the glare of publicity is hard to come by. Relaxing by the River Weir is one of their favourite pastimes. Few fans expected Barry to win an England cap ahead of teammates Andy Cole and Robert Lee. But for the County Durham lad, it completed the perfect homecoming. It's been the happiest two years of my career, professionally and personally. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, my family's very happy in Durham. We we'll love it around here. We are from the northeast. We we'll feel very comfortable. We're we'll settled. And of course, the football's going very well as long as I'm part of the team. You know, which is obviously what I'm after. Venison became part of an England team at Wembley in the friendly against the United States. His call-up to the squad by Terry Venables was late, some say a decade overdue, after winning England youth and under-21 caps with Sunderland. After a period of, well, it's been nine or ten years now, you know, your hopes start to diminish a little bit, but you never actually lose hope completely. You know, you just keep plugging away. But it was, I must admit, it was a surprise and a bonus to me. Not many kids can kick about with Dad wearing the international strips he's just brought back from Wembley. But before the season, Barry's aim was a Newcastle shirt. He thought he was struggling for a place when new boys, Albert and Hottiger, arrived. There was a real chance that I wouldn't start the season. It would have been interesting to see what would happen if Brace had been fit. Um, I would like to say that the two signs we have made have added so much strength and quality to the squad, and those signs have been welcomed, not just by the rest of the lads, but by me, even though possibly the threatened me Newcastle career. I think ultimately it's going to benefit Newcastle. Barry Venison's a modest lad in terms of he'll say, well, I thought my days were numbered. The, the fact of the matter is, if Barry Venison keeps playing well, keeps performing, and it's the same for every other player, not just Barry, they're going to stay on the side, aren't they? Staying in the side could take some nifty footwork from Barry, and Kevin would do well to keep an eye on Venison Mark II when it comes to skill at close quarters. Young Max would have a ball at his feet day and night if he could. Even his sister Jade shows great potential, especially in the air. Their mum Julie keeps a watchful eye from the sidelines, but will she be following Max in the Premiership one day? At the minute, I don't think there's much chance of stopping him because <laughs> I mean, he's a pain in the neck, to be honest, at times. Cause every time he comes in from school, he's wanting in the garden, playing his goal. He's, uh, I certainly haven't pushed him. That's one trap I didn't want to fall into, is forcing him into anything. Uh, the fact that he enjoys it, I enjoy him enjoying it, but I, I wouldn't push him into a corner. And I must say one thing, he looks as though he's getting the venison locks already. Yeah, yes, he's doing it without the domestos as well. But, <laughs> no. I, He's, uh, he wants his hairstyle the same as mine, which is unfortunate for a young lad to be lumbered with that kind of thing, isn't it? 
From Super Dad to Hooper Man, it's 20 minutes to kick off against Chelsea and Mike Hooper warms up knowing that this time it's for real. Pavel Cernacek's outstanding form has kept the ex-Liverpool man on the bench, but that opening day red card meant the big check must sit this one out. But if Hooper's keyed up, another keeper has almost passed himself, Budgie is really bouncing. At nearly 43, John Burridge is back on the Newcastle team sheet, if only as sub. But Burridge is a familiar figure around Newcastle's training ground. United are progressive enough to employ a specialist coach for goalkeepers. American international Brad Friedel was also keen to tap into more than 25 years of experience when he trained with Budgie. Um, it's like, like, a, like I said when I used to do the gymnastics and everybody used to say, this guy's a clown, he's an idiot. Really, you're not a football player, Roger. You're an handball gymnast. And I think the training is completely different to running 90 minutes. You know, you're up down and more explosive than aerobic. You know, at Liverpool, they, they probably had a coach the last couple of years I was there. I went six years basically just doing goalkeeping once or twice a month um, and it's, you know from the sublime to the ridiculous coming here but uh, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed working hard every day um, and certainly I've benefited. Burridge had two seasons at St James's just one of the 16 stops on his personal round Britain football tour but Newcastle is really special and John would do anything for another turn between the United posts. Well, I you know that at 42 years old, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a rarity, I, uh, I understand that. But if Kevin asked me to do it, I would certainly do it. I, uh, in fact, I would give the guy my eyes, he, he knows that. And because what he's done for this part of the world, him and Sir John, is near on short of a miracle in the last three years. If somebody ever said, Budgie, get off the bench and get out there, you'd be dying for it, would you? I'd walk on my hands from Durham to Newcastle to do it, for this club, for the Black and White Club. You, and I, I really mean that. John Burridge isn't the only one full of admiration for Kevin Keegan's achievements. Before the Chelsea game, Keegan received the Carling Manager of the Month award for United's flawless start to the season. Typically, he chose to share the moment with one of his backroom staff, this time physio Derek Wright. There'd been generous applause too for the return of Gavin Peacock, a real hero in United's first division championship season. It's every professional footballer's nightmare, turning up on a match day knowing the atmosphere and the involvement will pass you by. But Paul Bracewell has to face up to a full season out with inflammation of the pelvic bone. The treatment, complete rest. Yeah, because it's in the pelvic area, which is, um, you know, I can't do any abdoms, can't do any swimming or any jogging at all uh, until I have some more x-rays. So it's going to be a frustrating time, but, you know, I've got to have complete rest for, for the injury to settle down. Bracewell, at 32, is one of a nucleus of veterans who've been the backbone of Keegan's rebuilding. Ironically, Paul's misfortune led to another seasoned campaigner, Barry Venison, getting his first England cap. It must be reassuring to know age doesn't matter at Newcastle. Yeah, I mean, I think the game a couple of years ago, people, you know, more physical and get up and down the field, but I think the way the game has changed now, especially with the new laws as well, you know, it's all about passing and controlling and moving. Uh, and I think obviously we've got Peter Beasley here, who's 33, who's a prime example to it. And the boss is the same, age doesn't make any difference. I think Paul Bracewell will come back, will prove his fitness, and will earn himself another contract at this club, and will be playing in this side for the next three or four years. I can see that happening, because he's, he's had a lot of injuries, but he's also left miles on his clock in terms of, if you compare it with a car, his engine hasn't really been used every year, sometimes had two years off, year off. For a player who specialises in the less flamboyant role in midfield, his occasional goals have revealed the true skill level behind his economical style. Bracewell is now suffering for playing on through the pain barrier. But after a previous two-year fight back from an ankle injury, he's learned to be philosophical. It's part and parcel of football, like I said last year, if, if you'd have said to me I wasn't going to play again this year, I wouldn't have played. But, um... You know, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have changed it really. I mean, I wanted to play. Um, the, I was never forced to play. But this, that's the things that you, um, I'll probably suffer later on in life for, really. But it's the only thing I know, really, so there's not a lot else I can do. It's when the senior pros are suddenly on the sidelines that everybody starts looking for the young players coming through. Kevin Keegan has spent a fortune to bring success, nearly 20 million to get the best. But youth team coach Chris McMenemy has to work at the other end of the scale. Somewhere in Newcastle's youth team could be the next Peter Beardsley. So many great players have come from Tyneside, and if McMenemy can unearth the talent, he could save the club millions. 
problem that we've had in the past, possibly as a football club, is a lot of the good talent has left the area. We're determined that's no, no longer going to be the case if we can help it. Uh, and a lot of our efforts, a lot of resources have been put into this side of the football club just to ensure that we keep the best talent. They're not just going to come here and saunter through a couple of years of apprenticeship, get a full-time contract and walk into Newcastle United first team. Before, they had eight or nine in this first team here. When Ozzy Ardilis was manager and they were going down into the third division. Now, if that's a youth policy, I don't want it in Newcastle United. The Northern Intermediate League ranges from Darlington's youngsters right up to Premier League hopefuls, like United's opponents here, Sheffield Wednesday. No big crowds yet to spur on these lads, but in Newcastle's team is Chris Holland. He's already tasted the big time. He was the provider when Paul Bration gave United the lead. Bration has already made a name for himself with eight goals in the team's 10-1 destruction of Hartlepool. His incentive will be following a proven path. People like Steve Watson and Robbie Elliott and latterly Chris Holland last year have got into first team and done very well. And I think the success of any large club depends on the balance between the older, more experienced or the, the expensive player and the homegrown talent that we would try to produce at this football club. The balance in this game was blowing in the wind. It was behind Sheffield when United keeper Adam Wheeler was left stranded and Wednesday's Gavin Bailey got the equaliser. But Bration was keeping in the spotlight. His impressive solo run carved the way for a Newcastle winner. Wednesday's giant defenders were left trailing and Gareth McAlinden was just on hand to make sure. So, another small step on the long, hard climb to the very top. I don't feel sorry for him. You know, they had too many in before. They all thought, oh, they've got the best youth policy in the country. We didn't have the best youth policy in the country. We had one of the worst first teams in the country. That's why we had the best youth policy. It's competition time now and a chance for you to be the Now all you have to do is select which goal you think was the best that Andy scored. If it's the same as Andy's own favourite and your entry is the first picked out of the bag, then you've won yourself a number nine shirt. And we'll give volume two of the black and white video to the six runners up. Entries in by Thursday, November the 10th, please. And here's the address. Coal of the season, the black and white video, P.O. Box 1TN, Newcastle upon Tyne, any 99, 1TN. September the 12th, 94, the day Newcastle United took off for Europe again after 17 barren years. For Philippe Albert, a trip home to Belgium. For Kevin Keegan, a chance to pit his team against the best. On the plane, little sign of excitement among the players, but they were all up for this one. The destination was Antwerp. A city rightfully proud of its history and European capital of culture in 1993. The city may have been famous for its diamonds, but Royal Antwerp's Basweel Stadium was no gem. The 71-year-old ground was a complete shambles, and United made a formal complaint to UEFA. When the Toon Army arrived, they were met by a far more formidable military force. Belgium State Police were out in their hundreds. More than 4,000 United fans were in understandably boisterous mood, but their behaviour was to win praise from the Belgian authorities. The best sight in Antwerp? Peter Beardsley back in a Newcastle shirt well ahead of schedule. But a bigger shock was awaiting Royal Antwerp. Will Fox. Peter Beardsley, so good to see him back so quickly. Venison into the path of Beresford. Lee made the run. Oh, what a start! 53 seconds. Robert Lee and Newcastle United are back in Europe. It was a terrific cross from Beresford and Lee just launched himself at it and the goalkeeper was given no chance. Godfoy, run off it by Lee but it's run into the path of Saberlands. There's a chance here. The uh, useful save from Pavel Sonacek. Easily cut out by Sellers. Now Lee, Fox to his right, Cole to his left. Fox is the selection. Lee has gone on. Fox looking for Lee. Oh. What a fantastic start for Newcastle and for Robert Lee. And life is just one long party for the players and fans of Newcastle United at the moment. Fox with another perfect cross. And Lee, well, the only person he had to beat to the ball was Andy Cole. Into the path of Fox. Oh. 
It's reached cold by Emerex, and now Sellers, and now it's three. Scott Sellers adds his name to that of Robert Lee on the score sheet with six minutes of the first half remaining. Four marks to Andy Cole, goal provided this time. And Sellers just picked his spot. Beards has got it back. Now Robert Lee. Ottinger racing forward to be a part of the attack. And now he is. Ottinger's cross. Trick for Robert Lee. Hottinger racing forward and a hat trick of headers for Robert Lee. There's absolutely no danger of uh, Sellers just waking into the crowd. He maybe wishes he had now. It's come for Godfrey. And not for the first time tonight, Pavel Sudacek makes a really good save. Godfrey got hold of that, but so too did Sudacek. Watson arriving on the scene. He's just running through tackles and still Watson around the goalkeeper. And the substitute has made it five for Newcastle. Five nil, an electrifying performance that sent alarm bells ringing in Europe. Newcastle were back and in spectacular style. Lee was the big hero, but one man above all certainly knew where to hand the most credit. I'm very proud for them. I've been down to start to see them and, you know, but we've been playing that for a long time now, and you've got to give credit to Kevin and his stuff. You know, he's got them playing that way. It's Kevin Keegan in a sense. You know, we buy the players, but he's motivated them to play that kind of football. The new breed of English manager is changing the face of British soccer. Not just English, but British soccer. Changing the face of Peter Beardsley was next on the agenda. It's the morning after the sensational night before for Peter, and he's got another important appointment to keep. His European debut was followed by this fixture at Newcastle General Hospital. His dramatic return to action in Antwerp was two and a half weeks ahead of the schedule set out by his consultant. Peter came through the game unscathed, and the three fractures in his face were healing well. But just how serious was the injury that he picked up on the opening day of the season when he collided with Leicester City's Steve Thompson? On this evidence alone, it looked pretty bad. And unfortunately, he's received quite a, a strong blow, forceful blow to the cheekbone, and uh, which displaced uh, the, the side of his eye and also the floor of his eye and his cheek. I, I had terrible dual vision for about a week, and uh, Mr. Hawks was a bit worried about that initially. You know, he was a bit worried about how the operation would go in terms of that, but uh, luckily it improved, and uh, now it's back to normal, thanks. He was fit physically because he lives his life so well and he trains so hard and he doesn't overeat and he doesn't do the stupid things that sometimes can cause you problems when you're not, not fit to play. But mentally, when he said he was ready, that was good enough for me. Peter's become a familiar face in the X-ray department at the General. This latest session would show that the operations have been a success, but he still needs to take care. It's one of them things that once you get in the heat of the game, you can't think about it, otherwise there's no point. You know, I mean, there is a chance it could happen again, but uh, if it happens again, it happens. There's nothing you can do about it. How many times do managers talk about strength in depth? A sudden training injury to Barry Venison underlined the need for competition for places, especially with Arsenal away, the next major test. Yet again, Kevin Keegan showed the impressive flexibility in his squad and in his tactics. At last, a chance for Steve Howey to return, but now as a third central defender with Albert and Darren Peacock in a new look back five system unveiled at Highbury. Did that mean Newcastle were on the defensive? You've got to be joking. Too late for Arsenal, but how about this for timing? They met nine years ago in the heart of defence for a club called Charleroi. Now they're side by side again, Philippe Albert and the former Gateshead defender Peter Harrison. He's the man who spotted Albert's playing potential as a raw 18 year old and then recommended him to Kevin Keegan. Me and Philip played two years together. Um, either I played sweep and, and Philip played in front of me or we played double centre halves, you know. And I told him as much as I could. <laughs> the haircut might have changed over the years, but now he's back in black and white thanks to Peter. We were very friendly because, and also with Kevin Pugh, another another English player in Shalawa, and we were 
always with three at, at the trainings too, and I learn I learn very very well with uh, with them. His desire to go charging forward and try the spectacular though is all his own work. It's surely only a matter of time before he gets his first goal for United. Yeah, one day, <laughs> as, soon, as soon as possible. But that's not the most important for me. The most is important for me that's the team, you know, the, the, the ambience in the team. And if we win and Albert can't score, I'm very happy also. He's very happy with the way they're looking after him at a local five-star hotel. It's been a fantastic move. When he's came over, he, he just can't believe it, you know, that atmosphere, <clears throat> just the, the professionalism of the club, you know, and how big it is, and he, he says he's ready to settle here for good. And no wonder, he's become a cult figure with the fans. He must get mobbed everywhere he goes. Uh, not so much, not so much, because I'm not so popular than Cole or Bursley. <laughs> Derby County's Paul Kitson was no stranger to life in the northeast. The County Durham-born striker had the chance to come home and join Kevin Keegan's title challenge. It turned into quite a saga that began as First Division Barnsley arrived at St James's Park for a first leg, second round Coca-Cola League Cup tie. And that didn't follow the script either. A little bit of room there for Redfern. What a goal! Barnsley take the lead. Neil Redfern, a super strike. Beresford knocks in. Fox knocks it back and Cole. And normal service is resumed. Beresford against his old club, excellent cross, that was perhaps the hardest bit, and that is instinct, still Newcastle pressing forward, Watson has to deliver the cross, and Fox is there, 2-1, Will Fox, that's relief. Of course, there are some who think Newcastle's success is based on divine inspiration. Well, on a match day, even Cardinal Hume might not argue. The head of Britain's Catholics is a self-declared United fanatic and was the chairman's guest for the Liverpool game. England coach Terry Venables has more down-to-earth problems, like when to give Andy Cole and Robert Lee England debuts. But it was a depressing day for Barry Venison, Venables' latest international. His return to the first team against his old club was all too brief. Another hamstring injury on a day when United needed all their experience. So Newcastle's 100% record finally comes to an end, but the table shows it's still a magnificent seven-game start to the season by Kevin Keegan's team. Newcastle ahead of the field and the new Premiership title favourites. The eventual signing of Paul Kitson proved the club's determination to keep pressing forward. The on-off transfer move ended with a two and a quarter million pound deal. The 23-year-old goal scorer will give Newcastle extra cover up front. Getting a first team place will be the biggest challenge Paul has ever faced. Exciting days ahead, that's for sure, but the job still has to be done. A lot to look forward to. Um, there's going to be little problems, there's going to be players suspended, there's going to be injuries. We've got a tremendous squad here now and uh, they don't worry me too much like they did a year ago. I was. Fingers crossed no one would come in on a Monday injured. I still don't want injuries, obviously. I want all my players fit, but I sort of think now, well, hey, if that doesn't happen, I can try this. I've got so many options now. And as a manager, that's always very exciting. And that's it from this first edition of the Black and White Video. We'll have more of the very best of Newcastle United in volume two of this official video magazine. Be sure to get it from December the 5th. Join us then. <laughs>